Hello boys and girls, this is Deacon Mike and we're continuing with our reading of Laugh and Learn Bible for Kids. Today we're going to learn about Abraham. Abraham actually had two names, Abram and Abraham. You're going to learn why. Once again the world was sinking in sin. People were fighting, cheating, lying, ignoring God, and hurting each other. It wasn't the way God wanted it to be. And people were building bigger and bigger cities. One of the biggest was a city called Ur. Isn't that a great name? Just two letters. You are. If someone asked you where you live and you said Ur, they'd say, no, really, where do you live? And you'd say, Ur. And they'd say, stop making that noise. Where do you live? That would be fun, wouldn't it? But we don't have many cities with names like Ur today. We have Chicago, New York, Nashville, London, all those sorts of names. That's one kind of fun to say, but not as much fun as the name sounds like your stomach growling. Er. But back to our story. There was a man living in Ur named Abram. You probably know of him as Abraham, because later on God changed his name. But before he was Abraham, he was Abram. Abram lived in Ur with his family. And when I say family, I don't mean just his mom and dad. I mean his mom, dad, sisters, brothers, uncles, aunts, cousins, second cousins, and third cousins, and so on. A great big family. You see, in the ancient world, you were safer if you were in a big group. You were less likely to be robbed or attacked by another group of people if your group of people was really big. Going out on your own in the ancient world was a dangerous thing to do. So people didn't get out on their own. They stuck with their families. One day, God showed up and said, Hey, Abram, I want to go out. I want you to go out on your own. At this point, Abram didn't know much about God. He didn't have a Bible like we do now because it hadn't been written yet. He couldn't go to church like we can because there weren't any churches yet. But Abram trusted God. So when God said to Abram, leave your family and follow me, do you know what Abram said? He said, okay. I know, crazy. Why did Abram trust God when he didn't even know him yet? Would you have trusted God if you were Abram? That's not all that God said to Abram, though. God told Abram that if he did what God asked, God, Abram wouldn't be alone. God would be with him always. Not only that, but God would give him so many kids and grandkids and great-grandkids that Abram's family would be a whole nation, and they'd have their own land to boot. And the whole world would be blessed, giving an amazing gift through Abram and his kids. Wow! So Abram said, okay. He left his family. He left his country. He left everything behind and wandered off into the middle of nowhere following God who he had just met. He took his wife with him. Her name was Sarai. You probably know her as Sarah because soon after God would change Sarah's name too. Now they didn't take any children with them though because they didn't have any children. Sarai and Abram really wanted to have children but God hadn't blessed them with any. Which might, you make, which might you ask a very important question? How was Abram supposed to build a big, big family that could be a whole nation if he didn't have any children? And that's the story we'll tell next. But until then, let's talk about two things. An everyday truth, which is that I follow God because he leads me the right way. That's what Abram did, even into the middle of nowhere, because he trusted God. And what three promises do you remember that God made to Abram? Let me look back and see. He said that, number one, if Abram trusted God, Abram wouldn't be alone because God would always be with him. And two... God said he would give Abram many, many kids and grandkids and great-grandkids. And then three, he would give him his own land to make a nation. 
So now, let's pray. Dear God, we want to follow you where you lead us every day. Please show us the way to go. Amen. And now on to the Abram's, fam Abram's family, which is soon to be Abraham's family. In the ancient world, having kids was very important. Lots of kids. Why? Because living in the ancient world took a lot of work. You needed people to plant and harvest grain, people to take care of sheep, people to take care of goats, people to take care of camels. If you were attacked by another group of people, you needed people to help you fight back. The more kids and grandkids you had, the more help you had in planting and harvesting and shepherding and protecting. The more kids and grandkids you had, the better life you would be. Would be. Which is why it was so terrible that Abram and Sarai didn't have any kids. And why God's promise that Abram's family would become a great nation was so exciting to Abram and Sarai. By now, Abram and Sarai had been following God for many, many years. They had wandered over all the land God said would be theirs. They wandered down to Egypt and back again. You know, Egypt, that's where the big pyramids are. And God had blessed Abraham, Abram. He now had lots of servants and sheep and goats and camel. The only thing Abram and Sarai didn't have was kids. Abram was about to give up on the idea of building a family when God told him, Two things, two things. First, God said, your name isn't Abram anymore, it's Abraham, and Sarai's name is now Sarah. And Abraham said, okay. Then God said, and next year, Sarah will have a baby. And do you know what Abraham did? He laughed. Why do you think he laughed? Because the next year, Sarah would be turning 90 years old. Abraham had never heard of a 90-year-old woman having a baby. Have you ever heard of a 90-year-old woman having a baby? Abraham tried not to, but he couldn't help it. He just kept laughing. Then God said, and the baby will be named Isaac. Which means, get this, he laughs. Isn't that hilarious? A year later, Sarah had a baby boy and they named him Isaac. Everyone was amazed at this God who could make promises and keep them, even promises that sounded crazy. God wanted to see if Abraham really trusted him, really, really trusted him. So when Isaac was older, God asked Abraham if he would give up his son. Did Abraham really trust God? This was the child they had waited for, the child God had promised, the child God would use to bless the whole world. What if Isaac died? Would God still keep his promise? Would God bring Isaac back to life? Abraham didn't know for sure, but he did know one thing, and you know what that was? He trusted in God. So Abraham got ready to give up Isaac because, Isaac because God had asked him to. But God didn't want Isaac to die. He just wanted to know if Abraham trusted him. So as soon as Abraham was ready to give up Isaac, God sent an angel who called out to Abraham from heaven, Stop! Do not lay a hand on that boy. Then something amazing happened. God learned that Abraham would trust him no matter what. Abraham learned that God would keep his promises no matter what. Isaac learned that he could trust God as much as his father did. He learned that he could trust God with his life. So God said, Now I can use you to build my nation. And so what are the tricky bits out of that? Well, what is this word sacrifice? You've ever heard the word sacrifice? To sacrifice means to give up something. In the Bible, an animal sacrifice was often payment for sin. God didn't really want Abraham to sacrifice his son. He only wanted to know that Abraham trusted him. Did you see the ram? Go back and look for it. This is in the picture, and I'll show it to you just so you'll see it. There it is. You see, there's Abraham and Isaac, and there's a little ram. Yes, indeed. So, what did Abraham learn because he trusted God no matter what? Do you remember? And that is, God keeps his promises. What is one way that you can trust God right now?
Think about that. Now let's pray. Dear God, help us to obey you the way Abraham did, even when we don't understand your plan for us. And we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And see you next time. Bye, boys and girls.